Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. This one is just sort of like a hangout video for fun that I'm doing. Uh, what I have to do is I have to rebuild my Ubuntu GNOME virtual machine. And I have not shown the installation of Ubuntu in quite some time, so I thought I would do a video about it. But then I thought about it and I said, well, I don't do a standard installation of Ubuntu these days. So what am I going to do? And I decided I'd do the video anyway, and I'd do an installation of Ubuntu the way I do it. So this isn't a how-to guide. You don't have to do it this way. This is just how I have grown accustomed to installing Ubuntu. I have, let's see, uh, four physical computers, all of these virtual machines, and work with a bunch of clients. I have come up with a way of installing Ubuntu very quickly and automated a lot of the process. So I'm going to show you how that works today. Now, if you're brand new to Linux, some of this might be head scratching for you and you go, what are you doing? And I'm probably not going to be able to go into a great deal of detail, but that's the way it is. I'm going to do the video like that anyway. So this is just kind of how you can do it. And there's usually more than one way to do this as well. So keep that in mind. So let's talk about our virtual machine that we're going to be working on today. I do have some of it already set up. So the first thing that we want to look at here is I'm going to show you that I've got about four gigabytes of memory assigned to this machine. When I get done with that, I will probably turn it down a little bit. I got three processor cores out of eight that going to it, which should make it run fast enough for what we're doing in the video. Uh, we've got 256 megabytes of video RAM going on. Uh, the network here is a bridged adapter and the rest of it is blah, blah, blah. Now, the one thing I have done here is I've turned this uh, bottom bar on the window for the virtual machine off because I don't like it. All right, so that's our settings. Now, what we need to do here is go to storage and we need to go grab our ISO image of our installer and in this case it's Ubuntu GNOME 16.04 this is 16.04.0 this is not 16.04.1234 there's no point release here I'm starting with the original version and the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to stick with the 4.4 kernel I want to have the long-term support kernel and also want to have the older version of the Xorg display server all in here uh, later versions I've had problems with so the dot releases right now give me a, a heartburn on some hardware and in virtual machines so I just avoid it um, if you go online and you go to the Ubuntu site or you go to whatever you're gonna see that they don't have the older version available for download you have to go search for them they're up there and and you can find them even for the flavors of Ubuntu so you have to like do a search for you know, Ubuntu GNOME 1604.0 and look for older releases in the archive. That's how you do it. So that's all good to go. So let's start it up and we can get rocking and rolling on this. And it'll take it just a second to get itself all booted up. And remember, we're coming off the ISO the little ISO image file there and it's got a squash file system on it squash FS which runs really really slow because it has to extract extract everything that it is loading into memory right now it takes it a while to do it okay so we're not gonna be able to full screen this because of the fact that it is I don't think it has the proper drivers but we'll give it a shot let's see if we can full screen this for the video uh, we can we can run it like that. Let's do it that way. Okay, we can, we can do it like this, I suppose. Okay, so we're going to try Ubuntu. We're going to try really hard to use Ubuntu. Here we go. Let's see what happens when this loads up. This may, once it gets loaded up, have the right drivers. Let's see. Is that the case? No, it's not going to work that way. That's all right. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to open up the tweak tool since this is the GNOME desktop. All those politically correct people these days calling it GNOME when they have a little garden gnome foot for the whatever, and I've called it GNOME for 20 years. You guys are crazy. You know that? Uh, what am I talking about? I don't know. Got confused there for a second. Which has want to happen? 
T-W-E-A-K. Can you get it right? Yep, I can. Okay, so we open up the tweak tool. Man, you suck. I know. Okay, so we're going to make these fonts just a little bigger so they're easier for you to see, easier for me to see. It makes the world a happier place. And like I said, this is not really a formal, formal video. I just figured I would record what I was doing and hang out and talk to you guys. I don't care if there's an error. Go away. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is set up a static IP address for this here virtual machine because I want to be able to actually get to this virtual machine on a network using SSH. So it needs to have a static IP address so I will be able to find it and use the tools that I have created to work with SSH. So what do I need to do now? Well, I, what I need to do is go over here to the network. And we need to go here. And I need to go to wired settings. Go ahead and open that up. And we need to add a profile to wired, wired settings. So we don't need that security since it's wired. And we do want IP4, but we want it to be manual. And you're just going to be a big pain in the butt, aren't you? There you go. It wouldn't stay open. All right, here we go. And so we need to put this information in here. Now, some of you watching this might be saying, man, you're sharing the addresses on your local network. Yes, I am. You know why? Because most local networks use exactly the same scheme. So most local networks use addresses like this. I'm not sharing anything sensitive at all here. Not, not one bit. So the address of this machine is going to be 192.168.0.15. Well, where's my O? It didn't type. I was looking at the keyboard, not looking at the screen, and it didn't type. I Did you notice that? All right. So that is our address. The gateway is going to be 24, which is also a, just a different way of saying 255.255.255.0. And the gateway, 192.168.0.1. So that is set. Also, we are not going to be using automatic DNS, so turn that off. Our DNS server is running locally, 192 dot one six eight dot o dot one it runs on the router yay okay so we've got that set in there and that should be good to go that's everything that we know with well, yeah we're, that's what we need to do and that's all right so let's go to ip6 and for ip6 we're just going to have it ignore it because eh, this is a small local network doesn't worry much about ip6 so go ahead and add and there is our static IP address all set up. Now, the beautiful thing is I did this at this point because when we install our Ubuntu here, uh, it's going to carry those settings over. And then when we boot the machine, we can verify that they were, they were set up. So any network settings that you do with Ubuntu 16.04, Linux Mint, anything based on Ubuntu, it's usually carried over in the install. So we won't have to do that. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and install Ubuntu. And we'll open this here sucker up. And continue, yeah, because English is a good language. I like that just fine. Yes, we will install all the third-party stuff. No, do not download updates because it'll take forever. And besides, we're doing some... I'm going to do updates my way. Now, I've noticed here that sometimes this thing just sits here and spins and spins and spins and spins and it doesn't know what to do i noticed that as well but it did it this time but if you if you if it should appear to hang up then you can just quit it and then reopen it and it usually works the second time around go to something else because i'm going to do my own thing when it comes to the partitioning and I'm going to show you this because it's actually what I did when I installed it on the, the big machine here, that the host machine that I'm recording the video on. Uh, I'm doing the setup of the partitioning the way that Ubuntu 1704 and up is doing it. They have eliminated the swap partition, and we just create one giant 
big happy ext4 partition we'll put a swap file in it later now ubuntu 1704 and up is doing this automatically if you're installing 1604 or any of the linux mints this is something that you would have to do manually in linux mint i don't do it because linux mint actually has the hibernate feature and if you do this hibernate doesn't work in ubuntu it doesn't really matter because hibernate's not in your face anywhere so either way do whatever you want with it so we have about like an 18 gigabyte drive here and it's just free space because I haven't done anything to it other than to blank it and so we're gonna create one big giant happy primary partition man and we're gonna mount it there so we've got uh, primary beginning of space ext4 and we're gonna mount it at root alright so that's set up now I'm going to go ahead and proceed. Uh, let me see here. Yep, install now. Now it's going to complain because there's no swap space available to it. Don't worry about it. Just tell it to continue anyway. It's not going to crash. We've got four gigabytes of physical memory. It will be fine to install. Yep, I'm in the Eastern time zone. That'll work just fine. Got a US keyboard too. That's cool. And I'll put my name in here. And this is going to be, we'll just call this thing, uh, let's just call it uh, Ubuntu VM. A little bit longer of a computer name than I like, but that's fine. Because it's the only Ubuntu that I have. Um, well, it's standard Ubuntu now, isn't it? Because we would put, like, GNOME in there, but now they've gone to the GNOME desktop full-time, so just call it Ubuntu. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, put in a password. Make sure you type the right thing in. I've got several passwords that I use, and i got to stop and think about them. <laughs> it's like, eh, which one am I using today? Okay, so this is installing, and you might be saying to yourself, well, Joe, what happened to your separate home partition? Why aren't you doing that? I don't do that anymore. I don't bother with it because I have uh, pretty much figured out that we have these lovely in-place upgrades from Ubuntu and Linux Mint and many other distributions these days. And even if I do have to reinstall the OS, I can do it without uh, worrying about what partition it goes into. And it seems to me, especially when working with SSDs and virtual machines and stuff like that, that the fewer partitions that you have and the simpler the setup is on the disk itself, the better it works. So like the host machine here is running on a RAID system. And so I found that having less partitions makes it go a lot faster through the RAID controller. I've also found out that's true with SSDs. So I don't bother with that crap anymore. Just uh, let the installer choose what it wants to do usually, and what it wants to do is uh, Ubuntu now wants to create a big happy ext4 and create a swap file, and then Linux Mint, they're still creating a swap partition, but that's cool for Linux Mint, it's no big deal. And I'll just let it do what it's got to do. So this thing's going to sit here and go crunch, 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 and it's going to install its little butt off. And I'm not going to make you watch all that. I'm going to pause the video right now. Aha, we are complete. That took about five minutes, no big deal. You know, it occurred to me after I paused the video that that profile that we created for the static IP might not bring itself over since we're doing it for a quote-unquote wired connection in a VM. But we're going to find out. We'll see together whether that works or not. Wouldn't be the first time that I said something would work in a video and then turns around and it doesn't work. Happens all the time, you know. Works for wireless connections really good. And it looks like on our shutdown that we have locked up, which it has want to happen in virtual machines all the time. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to machine down here, and we're going to go to re of the set. And we'll reset the machine. There we go. It may try and boot off of the little USB image if it didn't get a chance to eject it automatically. I think it did, though. It looks like we're booting the correct operating system. So this is the first boot. 
Okay, so that's cool. Let's go ahead and get into our desk of the top. Just to make sure it's actually booted. I want to check that uh, Wi-Fi connection, see if that worked its way through. And you see, we're not, we're still not running the right video drivers yet, but it's not time to install those gang, gang so chill. Okay, so let's look at our connections for our wired connection. Wired settings. And it's crunching open on it. Well, yeah, it's showing the correct settings there. So I'm assuming that that is correct. Yep, right IP address, whole nine yards. So it brought that profile over. That's just the standard profile here, which is pretty awesome. Okay, that did what it was supposed to do. Nice to know. All right, <clears throat> so now that we have verified that our desktop actually works and the installation was somewhat correct, we're going to go ahead and log out of the desktop because we really don't want to be there right now. Let's just log out. And then we're going to switch over to a TTY for the next part of this operation. Now, I apologize, the font is a little bit small here on the video, gang. It's just the way that the virtual box renders it. And so, you know, we won't be here long. So let me put my password in, and I've got to log in. We're logging into TTY1, and it's telling me that we're logged in, and it's Ubuntu, and it's all that happiness. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go and uh, hit and update the entire system before I do anything else to it. And I'm going to do this from a command line. And the reason why I'm doing it from a command line is just to make it go a little faster. And uh, when you're doing this from the desktop with the update tool and you're going to install as many updates as we're going to install, sometimes the desktop itself can become very unstable. And when that happens is things crash and all kinds of goofiness can happen. So <clears throat> this way is pretty safe to do it. So we will do sudo apt update. And this will go grab the, oh, I know I mistyped that, so we're going to have to do it again. OK, so we're getting up to date. Now there's a lot of gobbledygook and garbage up there. That's to be expected. Don't worry about that for right now. Uh, sudo apt dist upgrade is the command we want dummy I actually don't put these in manually much anymore because uh, you'll see why later I wrote a program to do this okay yes please go ahead and update the system and it's gonna go out and download all of this lovely stuff and it's gonna update it and I guess I'll pause the video while it does it. Yeah, we're almost done with the updates, man. Looks like we're just getting down to the nitty-gritty here and uh, compiling a kernel. So we can sit here and talk about what's coming up in the video you guys are watching. So I just did all of the updates on the machine. And so far, so good. Everything installed. So we need to go ahead and reboot the machine. And then we are going to install some drivers in the desktop for video so that we can get it to be full screen and it looks right. That's going to be the first thing that I do here. And then we'll do some other stuff as we roll along. And we're rebooting. It did take it a little while to do that because at this point, what, 1604 came out in April of 2016. It's August 2017. So we're a little far down the road here. Lots of updates to actually install. And we are getting to a desktop, or at least we should be shortly. Oh, now we've got drivers that work. Very cool. I'm still going to put the later drivers in there, but we do have the drivers that work. Why didn't you like that? Thank you. Let me into my desktop. Okay, rock and roll. Now we got full screen. And it looks the way we want it to. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and install those drivers because it's just that we do want the very latest and greatest of the drivers. And to do that, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to devices. And then we're going to insert the disk. 
and we should get a little message that pops up on the screen says there's some software to run yes we do want to run it this is just for virtual machines this is not for anything else you know your video drivers may come from packages you download on the system or you might build your own or you might have a disk with drivers on it too so this usually doesn't take very long to actually install it says that we're creating the mod yep we're done and we'll go ahead and restart yet again restart now I noticed that in virtual machines I've been getting an error that comes up almost every time it boots up don't see it on hardware just in the VM so that's I think that one popped up back there it's a Plymouth error of some sort it says Plymouth D crashed or closed itself down the wrong way or something like that and I just keep ignoring it I probably need to go into where they keep the crash reports for that crash reporter they have in Ubuntu and get rid of it but it's okay all right so the new drivers appear to be working and we have a fully functioning desktop here we go yay rock and roll so the very next thing that we want to do is go get some files uh, so I can kind of automate the process of doing this and to get a terminal open in Ubuntu it's just alternate control and T which is a shortcut that I can't live without and I always add that to any other distribution of Linux now I can't look at this theme this is horrid so let's go ahead into profiles go to profile preferences okay so the first thing that I want to change is I want to use a custom font and we're going to use 16 nice big font easy to see and then I'm going to change the colors do not use the system theme and please use white on black and we'll won't we'll make the background just a bit transparent I like that too okay so that is done much better much easier to see here and let's see what this error is exactly so if I report it then it's gonna let me see what's crashing I bet you anything it's that Plymouth D error again and it showed up behind the terminal which is always so nice show the details please no it just it's just complaining that something shut itself down so no problem we may never see that error again I don't need to report a problem make that go away thank you very much okay so we're in a terminal now and I got a super big font for you guys to see so the first thing I want to do is go grab some files to make this go a little bit easier so what we're going to do is we are going to first ssh oh no just we'll use sftp and we're going to go into another machine on the network here and it's uh the host machine that's the one we're going to go into now you're saying well you've got why don't you just drag and drop and all that stuff well it works sometimes sometimes it doesn't in virtual box you notice that so go ahead and put in the password for the host and now we are using the SFTP program and we can just browse and get files off of there so what do we want to get well I got a whole list of stuff here so we use the get command and I want to get a file called dot face and I want to get a file called dot you got mail you'll see what that's going to be used for later and I also want to get a file. Uh, want to get dot Thunderbird. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Got to put the right stuff in. Get r dot Thunderbird. That's the configuration files for Thunderbirds. And get that to come in. That should take just a couple of moments. I have gotten so used to using F SFTP in situations like this, it's unbelievable that I don't even bother with anything else these days. Okay, so I want to go in here and I want to change this profile. There's one thing I forgot to change, and that is over here in scrolling. Please don't show a scroll bar. That annoys me. Go away. Thank you. All right, back to collecting files here. So uh, we're definitely want to get 
get. And we're going to get a directory here. So the one that we want is bin. And I grabbed it real quick because there's not much in there. We are going to get a directory. And now I'm going to get a file this time. And the file that I'm going to get is documents, scripts, and it's Ubuntu third-party install sh. So we're going to get that and throw that on the local machine. What else do I need to get here? Uh, I don't think nothing for right now, so we'll go ahead and get out of this. Bye. And then we will exit our terminal. No, don't exit the terminal because we have to run a command here. We'll go ahead and clear this. Okay, so to make this installation script that I have set up, let's open back there. I don't know. Go away. Okay, to make this installation script that I have come up with work, I have to install a couple of uh, programs first. So that's going to be the first thing we do. sudo apt install and we need uh, gdebi. And while I'm doing this, I'm just going to go ahead and put in synaptic htop. Uh, those are basic system things that I need. Another one that I'm going to need is called arp scan. Uh, and we definitely want the open SSH server on this. Open SSH uh, server. Let's see what else do we want here. That's a virtual machine. I'm going to have to, well, I'll get to that in a few minutes. We'll do that graphically. So let's go ahead and just install these few packages. And then we can run our script. Okay. Now we should be just able to fire off that script that I downloaded and it will go through and it'll get a bunch of stuff. And I'll tell you what it's doing as it rolls along here. You'll see the, the commands come up and go by. So, yeah. yep, this is the name of it. And we'll go ahead and run that. And the first thing it's doing is it's grabbing um, a deb file offline for a program called Ocean Audio. So it's going to install that. A couple of things like that come up. And see what we're doing right now. It's grabbing some files there. Now we're going to wipe Firefox off the machine entirely and we're going to download Google Chrome and install that. So that's going to become the the only browser on this machine. And I see that the Google repositories are running a little bit slow this afternoon. So what this basically does is it goes and it grabs third-party software. This is stuff that just isn't in the local repositories for Ubuntu and you just use sudo apt install to grab the packages. And I think that in here it's installing Ocean Audio. It's going to install Google Chrome. It will install Simple Screen Recorder, which is the application that I use to record videos. And it's also going to grab the Spotify client, although I'm not going to be using that in a virtual machine. But I figured I would go ahead and use the long script anyway just to show you guys what it does. And I do have a shorter one that all it does is just take Firefox off the machine and put the Google Chrome on. So, uh, tell you what, while this is doing that, let's switch down here to this terminal. Thank you. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and Make that font a little bigger for you dudes. That's kind of, that's almost like too big. Hello. So I should be able to make it a little smaller. There we go. About here is good. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that script. And I'm going to show you what the, uh, what it looks like. So we need to do less documents. Less, yeah, we're going to documents. Oh, I'm in scripts. The I was looking. It's gonna go in. Then I was hitting the alternate tab or hitting just the tab key to get it to autofill, and it wouldn't do it. So we can just put our script in here. Ubuntu, 
and we'll display it on the screen. So this is really not much to this script. As you can see, we're going downloading Ocean Audio up top here. We go and grab Ocean Audio, and then we purge Firefox, and then uh, Firefox gets purged here, and then we create a directory uh, for to download our temporary file, our little deb file there, and then we do that. And let's see, what else do we have coming down? Then we add a couple of repositories, and we install Simple Screen Recorder and Spotify. That's it. But that's a lot of typing to do on your own, so that's why I came up with the script. Okay, so and our script is finished running and we're good to go. So the next thing that we're going to want to do, I think, would be to, um, let's see, what do I usually do after this? Well, I just one more file that I gotta get through SFTP. Well, I need to, I need to log out and log in is what I need to do. Let me log out and log in. Log out. And yep. And yep, our little face came up there. So now we have my lovely little avatar, which is the Donald Fagan Nightfly album cover. And we're back to where we was. And the driver's loaded. And now we, this is what we've got going on. This is nice. So uh, let's cast one more file that I gotta go get. Let me open this up. And we'll full screen that. Because I don't like this theme and I want to change the theme. So I need to go get themes. So let's SFTPN. I have a, I have a alias. I don't have to type everything in. SFTPN11. Thank you. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get R, and then we're going to get themes. Put that in the home directory. Awesome sauce. I knew there was something that I needed to get that I didn't get. You know how that goes. Anytime you do that, you're always wondering... Okay, so I should be able to set my themes here, but the first thing I need to do is actually set up my web browser because in order to get the extension, I'm going to have to set up uh, Chrome to get the extension. It's the fun of working with GNOME. And it's running really slow because GNOME Tracker is going crazy in the background. Okay, let's add this to favorites. It's one of the downsides to whatever version of the GNOME desktop it is that comes with 16.04 is the fact that when you first boot it up, it's got Tracker running in the background and it's going insane back there. I don't want that. So it actually runs really, really slow for a few couple minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and set up Google Chrome. And I have to log in and get the sync going for that. So I'm not going to bore you with that. And once I get Google Chrome set up and uh, I can go to the extensions page, we'll take a look at it. Okay, Google Chrome is set up and we're on the extensions page so we can grab some extensions. And the first one that I want to get is the user themes, which I just clicked on. And now well, let me get back out here. We'll do this one more time. Okay, reload. Thank you. So I want to click on user themes, not the person who posted it. I don't need their profile. Thank you for developing it, though. I certainly do appreciate it because it's very useful, and I do like the plugin an awful lot. So let's see. Applications menu. No, no, no. And open weather. Not in a virtual machine. I do like to change the alternate tab behavior, so we'll do that one. Okay. And let's see. What else do we want here? No top left corner. You have to turn that off with an extension, which I find a little strange, but there you go. You have to do it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and turn those off. And then we can load our theme that we have imported into the machine. So let's go to Tweak Tool. Okay, uh, so as far as the theme is concerned, we should have one available to us. Yep. Uh, let's see what we got here. High contrast. Yeah, the GTK theme, we definitely want to change to... Okay, no, we're going to leave that alone. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, so what else do we want to change in here? Let's go down to Windows. I like to have my buttons. Put those on there. Let's see what else are we going to do in here. Uh, that's good for now. That's good for now. Fonts. We already did that. We don't need to worry about that in a VM. Okay, so, um, hmm. I need to grab a package real quick. And the one that we're going to get is yeah, sudo apt. Let's see. We need gnome colors common. We'd like to install that as well. Not just. Okay. And the other package that we need to get is going to be. Well, we need to install Thunderbird. Because I do want my mail client to be in here. Don't ask me why. I just always set up a mail client in every machine that I'm on. It's kind of like backing it up. So. If the mail client messes, I don't know. It makes no sense. It's just a habit. I always do it. Like we really need a mail client. So I'm, I'm going to grab that icon theme real quick. And while it's doing that, we can find, um, let's do a, a more appropriate background, shall we? Let's see what we can do. It's kind of boring, don't you think? I'm not going to import any backgrounds. I'm just going to choose one of these. This one looks good with that the obsidian theme that I like well there. And see, I've already extracted that onto the host machine because it's running uh, the same thing as well. So we've installed Thunderbird. So let's go through here and look and see what we've got on our favorites that we don't need. Like I'm definitely not going to be using Evolution. So remove that from favorites. I don't like empathy. I have no reason for that one. It's a virtual machine. I don't need rhythm box here. Don't need that program. Uh, we'll leave LibreOffice Writer on there and I don't need help. I already know what I'm doing. So that's pretty much basically it. So the next thing that we want to do is to start removing some software and it opened up the calendar. I don't need the calendar. Make it go away. Okay, so I need to take some software off this machine. And I'm going to do this graphically just uh, because, you know, I've actually found out that it's pretty easy to do with this crazy software application. Now, it's not the world's greatest thing. And, of course, this is what replaced the software center and all that stuff. But at least it'll give me a list of the installed crap on the machine that I want to remove. So we definitely want the archive manager. I'm going to get rid of that backup program. I don't need that. And what else do we need to get rid of here? Let's see, I'll keep Bracero and resets when it's doing this. Make sure it doesn't reappear because sometimes it does. Remove. Thank you. Okay, so it's probably going to blink off and on again like that. I want to get rid of empathy because I'm never going to use it. it's going to reset so what else do we have on here that I don't have any use for well that music program that comes with the gnome desktop I'm not going to use 
And it should be photos on here as well. I want to get rid of that. So go ahead and remove that, please. Because you don't need it on a virtual machine. And what I ordinarily use for photos anyway on uh, with a GNOME desktop is Gthumb. So no need to do that. Like I said, sometimes you got to click on it twice to get it to go away. And I installed Spotify on here, but I'm probably not going to use it on a virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and get that off of here as well. And then I'll just remove the repository here in just a couple of seconds. So that should be about done uninstalling all the lovely software. And that's all I'm going to take off. and close that up and we'll go back to the menu uh, the activities here because I do want to open software but I don't want to open that I want to open software and updates so we will make canonical partners active and it's not wanting to there we go thank you and as far as updates are concerned, I ain't going to do nothing. So never check for updates. And never, well, we'll just tell it to display immediately if it does come up with an update. But I'm telling it not to look. Because when you have it looking for updates this way, it's running in the background. It's actually a, a, an Anacron job that runs uh, when you first boot up the machine. So it can slow things down and I do it manually I do it from the step just have that click display the mouse doesn't want to cooperate there we go thank you always the fun of working in virtual machines okay there's a, some drivers I want to a one driver I need to install even though this is a VM you know what we didn't do we didn't create swap space we need to do that so we'll do that after we're through messing around here Let's create some swap space. So we want to apply the changes because I want to put the AMD microcode driver in there. That won't take long to do it all. And you don't even need to reboot for that one. I mean, it'll tell you to reboot, but you don't actually have to do it. So let's go ahead and create some swap space. We haven't done that yet on this virtual machine while that's working in the background. So I'll show you how to do this. We're going to do a swap file. Remember, we did not do a swap partition, so we need to create some swap somewhere. Now, the nice thing about doing things in swap files is that you can resize it at any time. You can change it. You can move it around. You can do all kinds of lovely stuff with it. So the first thing that we need to do is create a file. And the command that we will use is sudo dd and then we're going to tell it what the output file the input file is and that is going to equal dev 0 dev 0 is nothing but a little virtual file that nothing doesn't it doesn't do anything but spit out zeros all the time it just just constant zeros and our output file is going to be uh, yeah no that's correct um, swap file so we're creating a file in the root directory and we're calling it swap file. Now we need to tell it how big it's going to be. So the block size is going to equal 1024k. And then the count is going to tell us how big of a space we're going to, how big of a file we're going to get. So we'll put in the count. And that equals, uh, how big of a file do we want to make? So we make it in, in megabyte, it's here, so, okay, so I guess, I guess we'll do 2048, which will make a 2 gig swap file, and that's a little large for a virtual machine, but we'll go ahead and go with that, because the target memory on this machine, when I get done with it, is going to be 2 gigabytes anyway. So to review the command that you just saw typed in, sudo ddif equals dev zero of equals slash swap file block size equals 1024 kilobytes and the count for those blocks is going to be 2048 which will give us a two gigabyte file turn it loose 
by hitting the enter key put in a password and now it is actually creating that file in the background okay so it says it's copied the zeros and created our file let me go ahead and close this too um, you don't need to reload that just close it okay so now we have our file we got to do a couple of things to it to make it swap right now it's just a big big file with zeros in it that's all we've got at this point so what we're going to do now is we're going to do sudo and we're going to change the mode on that file chmod to 600 which is going to give the root user access to read and write with it and nobody else can l look at it at all so we're doing that for security purposes so and the file we're going to do is swap file so we'll change that now the next thing that we need to do actually and this is going to probably sound a little weird we need to defragment that file if we don't defragment that file chances are we've got a bunch of little bits and pieces of it all over the drive it's going to run faster and it's going to be more efficient if it's all in one big piece and in one place uh, so we're going to use a defragmentation program to do that but Joe, you don't need to defragment Linux. Now, you really don't, but when you're doing something like this, you do. Because if we've created one big, huge two gigabyte file like that, we'd like it to be contiguous. I like that word, contiguous. That means it's all in one piece. So this will take it a couple of seconds for this to do this, because it's a pretty big file and it's running on a virtual machine. Now what's nice about this is the way we're going to set it up is that at any time we could delete this file and then we could put another file in there and make it any size we wanted to. So let's say that we started out with a machine that had 4 gigs of memory in it and then we decided to upgrade to 8 or 16 and we wanted to add swap to it or maybe even take it away. Guess what? You can do it that way. Now when you're creating swap files you don't need as much swap space because it's not it doesn't work like a swap partition you can't hibernate the system so usually you can make them pretty small so if you have let's say anything I would make the smallest that I would make my swap space two gigabytes and if you had like over 10 gigabytes in the machine go ahead and make it like three gigabytes of space so two or three is fine and of course if you have not a whole lot of memory in the machine let's say that you only have like one gigabyte you're working on a really older machine then make it like 2.5 and that will be pretty cool hold on somebody knocking on the dough oh that was fun i thought i had pressed pause and i hadn't pressed pause so you heard all that lovely noise going on and you can talk to me later because i just started recording the video and this is what life was like recording videos in my house because it's just the way it goes man so anyway we've created our swap file we have defragmented our swap file so the next thing that we need to do is make it into a swap file sudo make swap is the command yeah, I typed that correctly. And then our file, once again, is swap file. S-W-A-P. There we go. So now that is a swap file. It is a swap space for the computer to work with. If we want to change that, all we got, uh, if we want this to work all the time, when we reboot the machine, we're going to have to tell the system that it exists. So let's do that right now. And we'll need to edit a configuration file to do this. And the file we're going to edit is, let's see, we'll go ahead and use gedit. Uh, let's do, uh, yeah, gk sudo gedit. And the file that we're going to do is etc. And then we're going to do fstab. Do this as an administrator, yes. And it opens it up in gedit. Now, the reason why it hasn't caught on to the theme yet is because I haven't logged in and logged out. So that's why it looks the way it does. But it'll be okay. Actually, let me go in here 
and let's make these fonts bigger. So now I don't want to quit. I want to go to uh, preferences. Mm -hmm. Hang on with me. I'll figure it out in just a second. I don't do this every day. We want to go to edit preferences. That's where it is. Yes. And where can we change the fonts? Do not use the system font. And we'll make it big. I think that was the name of an album for a pop band in the 80s. Remember Wham? Make it big? Yep. We used to have a lot of fun with that album title on the radio. <clears throat> That's for sure. Okay, make it this. Which one do I, I like? Cobalt. That's a cool one. Yeah. So that's what we're going to look at here. Okay, so we are here, and we have our FS tab file. We need to add something to the FS tab file. We need to tell the system where swap is. I want to make it real simple, because we're just going to give it a, a file name call. So uh, instead of looking for a UUID or a label or something like that, we'll just call it swap file. So we want to put that there, and then tab over here. We'll get this all lined up so it looks really cool. There's none for the mount point. And then all we got to do is tell the system that it is swap. The default rules for swap are actually just SW. And then zero for the dump because that's the backup flag and zero it's not going to be scanned or looked at by fsck when the computer boots up so let's double check our syntax here yep looks good no problems so we can save our file and we'll restart the machine and when we restart the machine two things will happen will happen our theme will be ubiquitous and not only that we will uh, have swap space which we don't have right now. Okay, I shut it down, didn't I? Yeah, man, you closed, shut down, not restart. That's okay, because I want to change something here anyway. Not a problem. Oh, it is restarting. Or I started it. <sighs> These things sometimes seem to have a mind of their own. course if you're doing something like this that you ordinarily do automatically and then you're stopping to tell people what you're doing that makes it a little strange as well all right Okay, now the reason why it keeps flashing that every time I reboot is is that the video, uh, virtual video card in the hypervisor hangs on to that. And when the drivers kick in, it switches back to that. I've noticed it does that every uh, uh, with virtual box and NVIDIA cards. Kind of weird. Anyway, let's see if we have um, our swap space, which is what we were looking for. And we'll just use HTOP to see that. Yep. We got two gigabytes of swap space, which is what we wanted. And right now we got four gigabytes of memory. And that gives you an idea of how much GNOME uses uh, when it first boots up. It's only 656K. Now when the tracker kicks in and starts looking at things, it'll start caching stuff. And that'll go up a little bit. So that's why GNOME appears to use a lot more memory than other uh, desktops do. But it, it just loads a lot of stuff into memory uh, that it can dump if it needs to. So I'm going to go ahead and power this machine off once again. I'm going to change my settings. And let's see. I want to go into system. And I want to go ahead and give this 2048. And then for processors we only need two. Because a lot of the time I'm just booting these up real quick to do one simple quick thing 
So having it suck up a lot of uh, resources to do that, it, it's you know not cool. And not only that, I usually am running a bunch of these at a time when I'm doing it. Uh, like if I'm doing updates or working on things that have to do with these machines. So I'm about ready to just call this thing done. There's a couple of more little little things I want to show you real quick before I wrap up the video about installing Ubuntu because there are a couple little things that you have to do that you wouldn't have to do in Linux Mint or any other distribution. So let me go in here once again and get to the desktop. I wonder if it'll switch back to that. Nope, there we go. See, it kind of holds on to the old image from the last time it's booted until you restart the hypervisor. That's how that works. Okay, so one more thing I want to do real quick just to show you guys so you know how to do this. When you install Ubuntu 16.04, I think all the way up to the current Ubuntu, they have this lovely little Fluendo MP3 codec in here that basically just makes MP3 sound awful. And the idea is, is that you'll go buy MP3 uh, codec from Fluendo and then it'll make things sound great again when in reality all you have to do is remove this particular package and guess what? Everything works the way it's supposed to. So let's go ahead and find that package real quick. And we're going to use the apt cache command to do that. And we're going to search for Fluendo. Oh. Where'd the H come from? I don't know. Okay, now it's showing us that that particular file is there. Something crashed. I don't care at this point. And we will look at GStreamer. So we want to sudo apt remove. And this uh, file is GStreamer. Okay, what is it? Uh, 1.0 flu. Should give us the whole thing. All you gotta do is remove this file, and then if you should play MP3 audio, then it won't sound gritty and nasty the way it does. They do that on purpose, since, as far as I'm concerned, it's a little bit underhanded on the, on Canonical's part. But they also wanted to be able to distribute MP3 legally when it was still under copyright. So that's still left over in 1604. You have to go get rid of it. So that's the, probably the last thing that I'm going to show you here. So now we have a nice virtual machine that's running Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop, which is going to be the default desktop when 18.04 comes along. Now, I probably will not upgrade Ubuntu uh, on my host machine that I'm recording the video on, but I might upgrade it in this here virtual machine in a few months when 18.04 comes along. And that will be really cool to see how the upgrade works and how it goes from Ubuntu GNOME to being standard Ubuntu. And all I got to do is just throw a couple of applications into the favorites. And we'll be good to go here. I think this is actually a completed machine. So anyway, I wanted to show you guys how I do that. And, and usually when I do it, it goes really, really fast because I don't stop and explain what I'm doing. That's what took forever. But I have some scripts that are set aside to install things that ordinarily would be more difficult to install. And, and I kind of know what packages I need right off the top of my head. Um, I'm not going to put a bunch of like audio, you know, audio stuff on a virtual machine here because I'm not going to be doing that. But after you've done this as many times as I have, both for myself and working with clients, <laughs> You become very deadhead about it, and you can do it. So anyway, there you go. It is Ubuntu 16.04 GNOME installed in a virtual machine with a static IP address and with a swap file instead of using swap space. Oh, and I know somebody commented on this about this. I'm going to, uh, usually when I show you guys how to do that, I will open up the disks program. And... Then I'll show you, you know, tell you to turn on the right buffer cache. I've done this in several other videos and showed you guys. You don't actually need to do this because you know what I found out? It's interesting. Okay, so if we go to drive settings and then we go to write cache, right now it's showing that it's turned off. It's actually on. It's just that the disk program doesn't know that yet. So you can turn it on. Okay, and it'll ask for your password. 
Now, if you ever, for some reason, want to turn it off, you can toggle it off. So now if I go here and then I would click turn this off, what I'd actually, I would really be disabling it. But by default, it's on, which is a little strange. That's how that operates. So if uh, you watch my videos and you think, oh, I've really got to do that, you don't have to. Now, I always turn it on just because I want control of it. I want to be able to say, well, maybe I want it off. And what does that do? That allows the system to store things that you're going to write to the hard drive in memory. And that can make the system run a little bit faster. But it's actually uh, in Ubuntu as of like Ubuntu 14.04 or maybe even further back than that. It's actually on by default, but the GNOME Disks program doesn't know that. So I've showed that before. So I just wanted to put that out there. I'm going to call this done. Oh, and remember how I got a little confused when I was running the updates by hand? There's a reason. I don't usually do updates by use, do, typing in sudo apt update and then sudo apt, you know, upgrade or dist upgrade. I don't use those commands. All I do is use this one, which is up. Because I wrote uh, my own little script to do that. So right now, this virtual machine is updating. And it's telling us that we have no updates needed. Awesome sauce. This thing, I'm going to call it complete. Thank you for watching the video. There, this was just hanging out with me installing this. I mean, that's all it was. I just felt like I would go ahead and record it and throw it up there for you guys who like to do that and like to watch things like this. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook, please. Check out Easy Linux on the web. If you are going to be asking for official support on anything, do that through the contact page at easylinux.com. And also, why not check out freedompenguin.com for lots of really groovy stories about Linux from contributors such as myself. That would be a cool thing for you to do as well. And if you like what you see here, share it. If don't, if you don't, well, I ain't got nothing more to say to you. Talk to you later, gang.